Hello and welcome to this special on Fox Sports. I'm Adam Peacock, joined by Robbie Slater and the Socceroos and Ollie Roos coach Graham Arnold to have a really good chat about what's coming up uh, with our national teams coming mm. up. Uh, hello, gents. How Great are we? Good to see you. Good to see you, Adam. Arnie? Been a long time. Yes, <laughs> exactly. It's a long time exactly. since we've sat in chairs like this, but it's great. And obviously with the Socceroos and uh, very exciting times to look forward to. Yeah, World Cup qualifiers on the horizon. The Tokyo yeah. Olympics, which the men's program hasn't qualified for in Olympics uh, since... Well, 2008, since you, last since you were last there. Um, a lot's been on your plate in the last 12 months. You're probably sick of Zoom. Yeah. You're about to Zoom off finally overseas yeah. and see coach people face to face. Um, how has the last 12 to 18 months been as the national team boss? Yeah, no, look, it's, it's been like for everyone in the world. It's, uh, it's a pandemic that we've, uh, the country's dealt well with. And, but I've uh, really, missed, really missed football, <laughs> missed being back on the field and, and helping players and, and working with players. And... Uh, you know, overall, it's been uh, tough for everyone, but uh, great to be back, uh, you know, with the Socceroos now. We're, we're flying away tonight and uh, the staff and catching up with some of the boys next week and <clears throat> looking forward to, to Q8 where, you know, on the third, well, the fourth, I think it is here in Australia, on the fourth of uh, June is our first game against Q8 and, well, you know, we're rebooting the World Cup cam campaign. And if you talk us through that 18 months, I mean, what, you know, without being hands-on to, to, with the players, what, what's filled in your time it's, um, in what has been, as you mentioned, an amazing time? Well, I've, been, I've probably improved on technology <laughs> now because I can actually work as a, a computer with Zoom meetings. And, uh, but just a lot of work behind the scenes, Rob, with the, you know, looking at the structure of the, the game for the kids mm. and uh, <clears throat> what's, you know, what's the best way to go for the kids as well. And, and doing stuff that really it's not, you know, my forte. It's, uh, you know, I just want to get back to coaching. But it's, a, it's, it's been a busy time, even though I haven't been on the field coaching. It's been obviously busy, but uh, communicating a lot with the players because, you know, all the players are overseas, or most of them anyway. And even here in Australia, it's not normal like it, it used to be. And being able to communicate with the players and make sure that uh, mm. they're, they're fine. You're massive on preparation and making sure every single detail is, yep. is handled. I mean, a stale bread roll in the team room could maybe put you off sometimes. So how has it been in trying to prepare for this? Because you go Dubai, little training camp, Kuwait, you've got players over with the Oli Roos, you've got some um, friendlies over in Spain mm. for that group as well. Two things going on at once, logistically, with the fact that borders are very hard to get across in the current climate. How has yeah. it all been? Look, it's, uh, you, you know, you're nearly down to plan plan Z, you know, the way it's gone this year and <clears throat> every time you plan something it gets, you know, it gets killed. But uh, look, I think the most important thing was obviously, as you said, is you have to plan and have to have preparation and, and, and be ready for every occasion. It can't just be a plan A and if that falls over then you don't have a plan B or C. So, you know, we've uh, planned very well, I believe, and we're going through to Dubai uh, tonight, as I said, and, and uh, I'll have 13 players from that Europe uh, that will come in on Monday next week. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it'd be great, obviously, for them to get back together and, you know, we, we reconnect that Socceroo family. This is Robbie. I kind of remember this game. I, was, I, I can, it, was, it was absolutely freezing on the sideline. But, uh, yeah, look, this international football for us has, has been dead. And um, mm -hmm. because of our, you know, geography has certainly helped us in the controlling of the pandemic and... We know how hard they've had it in, in, uh, in Europe and South yeah. America, but it hasn't helped our football because a lot of those nations, Arnie, yeah. have been playing international football, yeah. whereas we haven't been. And, and for quite the foreseeable future, I can't see us playing international football in this country. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. OK, so we, we look ahead to these four games that you yeah. want to get right, and it's not so much about, OK, handling the opposition, which, with all due respect to the opposition, Kuwait yeah. are pretty good. They're going to be hard to handle, but Nepal and, and Chinese Taipei and, and Jordan the depth that we've got at the moment and yeah. everyone playing overseas, it's different for everyone. Yeah. Um, away from family and friends here, it's yeah. difficult, the heartstrings being pulled. How much depth do we have with our overseas-based players at the moment? Yeah, look, every, uh, again, every country is different and that's been the hardest thing to plan and, and to get right. Um, a lot of players that, uh, you know, like the Mitch Langerak uh, retirement really shocked me, to be honest. It was yeah. a surprise, but it pr pretty much wakes you up then and makes you aware of what a lot of the other players are dealing with as well. Mm. So that wasn't because he was thinking he was going to be number two? No, no chance. That was because of a family situation? situation. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, you know, I had a text message off him. He wanted to have a chat to me. Um, and I tried to convince him one step at a time. Okay, then maybe don't come to Q8. 
Hmm. But let's Wait. see what happens after that. And he was just adamant that uh, he didn't want to... He's seen the program ahead. He's seen the schedule in front of us. And within Japan at the moment, the two weeks quarantine, exactly the same as here in, in Australia when the players get back, <clears throat> that uh, he didn't want to be that, that hmm. much time away from his family. So at the end of the day, I, I always will support a, an individual's... Uh, decision and uh, as I said it was a shock to me that uh, that uh, Mitch uh, did retire but at the end of the day <clears throat> I think that's part of the big part of around COVID is understanding the, the individual everyone has different issues in life everyone has different situations in life and making sure you understand that and hear them what they're saying so then you can help make that decision for them to come into camp. And the big difference in today and we spoke on the phone a couple of weeks ago and you put it to me like this now when we played, or in most areas that you played, if you got called up for the national team and you said no, you, know, you, you, you probably don't get selected again. Yeah, you're, but you're done. It's a different era. It's a different yeah. situation now, isn't it? You've, yeah, there's 100%. people that have been in lockdown. There's, yeah. there's mental uh, mm. health issues and families. Yeah, 100%. You know, it used to be, as you said, retirement was number one. Yep. Now these days, well, then there's suspension around FIFA windows yep. if you refuse to, or if a club stops yep. you from coming or... Or that you can suspend players, but that that's in especially with this pandemic, that's not my way. No. <clears throat> I think every individual has that right, especially through COVID, especially most of the players don't have the vaccine. Uh, and most of the staff only have one vaccine, myself included in that. Uh, so at the end of the day, it's it's got to be the 100% commitment from the player, the individual that he wants to mm. be there. The guys that we understand that will be there, uh, so Matt Ryan, who's now at Arsenal, getting a few yep. minutes in the Premier League. Uh, Matthew Leckie, who played on the weekend yep. for Hertha Berlin. Question around he might be coming back next year. He's to the contract, yep. we don't know, or maybe staying over there. Uh, Trent Sainsbury as well. So these big players like that, that they're mm. fully committed and, and yeah. pumped no, about look, this. Look, you've got to understand how much these players have been you know, how much has been taken away from them as individuals as well, because, <clears throat> you know, they haven't played for their nation for 18 months. Uh, they've missed, obviously, that experience. And, and unless you have that experience of getting away from the club and being able to go and play for your country, it really freshens you up mm. mentally and, and gives you a lot of drive to go back. When you go back to your club, you're always in much better shape mentally. And so they've, they've really suffered from that. But uh, as I keep saying to the boys, you know, nothing has been cancelled. It's just been postponed. It all will, yep. It's all in front of us. Yes, what's in front of us is a congested program, mm. but we have to get on with it. And, uh, you know, I'm getting text messages every day from the boys that they're so excited to get back into camp. And as I said, I'll get 13 in on Monday, Tuesday next week and Dubai will start to acclimatise. And uh, then the rest of the players will arrive in the FIFA window. Any, and I know the squad isn't nailed down. It was going to be announced today, but a mm. few things have happened, so it's probably going to be announced next week at some stage, which is the normal time before yeah. you start playing. But have you got any left fielders for us, maybe, that are going to... No, look, I think... Uh, yeah, look, um, <clears throat> I think there's, uh, there's going to be a good number of younger boys that'll be part of the Olympic team that'll be in it as well. Because I truly believe the strength of the Socceroos is the Oli Roos, because they should be pushing and knocking mm. on the door to you know, to get into the Socceroos. So there'll um, be a few going to both, Tokyo and yes, these World Cup yes. qualifiers. And, and you will see, then I do believe that uh, after that, you will see a very, very strong Socceroos squad and those kids will be uh, knocking on the door to go to Qatar. Sounds good. Yeah. And um, the question I'd like to ask is, not only here, but overseas, how have the clubs been with, with you know, selections and mm. when you've talked to whether it be the managers or, or people you've had to talk to, how's the reaction been from... And our own A-League clubs, because yeah. we know some of the A-League players are going. We know it's finals time. So how, how's that going? Yeah, look, it's been, it's been great. Um, look, I have to say that, you know, the European-based clubs have been very helpful in terms of a lot of their competitions have finished, uh, either finished already or mm. this weekend, mm -hmm. and they've given them early release. So they're not waiting to the FIFA window before they release a player, which <clears throat> gives us a good five or six days to acclimatise mm -hmm. in Dubai. The A-League clubs, uh, the most important thing for me was communication with them. And uh, we communicated very, very well with uh, the APL clubs. And, and, and look, I, I, you know, I've been out to all the coaches. The coaches are the ones I feel for because I didn't make these rules, the FIFA window. Mm. The FIFA window was put in place by... Obviously, FIFA, it was extended by five days because of the pandemic. And I do feel sorry for the A-League clubs because at the end of the day, 
their competition was going to be finished before the FIFA window, but due to border closures, Greg O'Rourke and the team have done a great job with, in terms of the, the rescheduling of it. Um, and as I said, I've spoken to all the coaches. The mm. coaches know which players are going to be missing the final series during the FIFA window. And uh, I feel sorry for the players because it's so hard for a player yeah. to make a choice. Yep. And, and they want to play for their clubs. They want to play for their country. And for that, not to be, for that to be taken away, it's also tough on the individual. But, you know, as I said before, it's, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's been in place for years. And, and, you know, I just say again that, you know, I truly believe strongly that, you know, with a domestic uh, calendar of, of, of mm. uh, around the matches and FIFA windows is so crucial. We are probably only one of three nations in the world that, don't, that doesn't have FIFA windows where we can do all of our mm. international activity and reward the players. They come home, they go back to their clubs. And if we all had FIFA, if we had FIFA windows, we wouldn't be talking about this today. Mm. Exactly. Uh after the break, though, we're going to chat more about the A-League and something uh, some of the players that have jumped out to you in the A-League. Before we do go to that break, though, one player that sticks in my mind still from the 2018 World Cup, Daniel Arzani. Where exactly is he mm. with his football at the yeah. moment? Will he be involved with the Socceroos? Is he an Olympic hopeful? Where, where does he sit at the moment? Yeah, look, uh, he's, he won't be with the Socceroos, mainly just down to the lack of game time. And I've said it since I've been in the job uh, with the Socceroos that, <clears throat> for me, the most important thing is that players are getting game time and they're, and they're match fit because we can't control match fitness. It's, it's, mm. it's too short a time. They've got to be... They've got to already have that. Daniel... Uh, he's had a bit of an injury at AGF. Um, he obviously left FC Utrecht uh, during, in January, during the transfer window, went to AGF and hasn't had much game time there either. So he will go away with the Olly Roos and uh, with Gary Van Egmond and uh, we'll get to see how he's there. Robbie, your thoughts on Daniel Arzani and where he's at at the moment? It's, a, it's, it's not a great story, to be honest, considering when at this point, you know, he was the next, he was the big, big hope for us. And yeah and uh, was going to be the big star, and he certainly had an impact but off the bench. And therein lies the problem is when Daniel Arzani left this country, he wasn't even a regular. He'd never played 90 minutes of football. In fact, I'm not even sure if he has up until t today. You would think all this time away that, that he would have. But for me, he was badly advised, in my opinion, uh, that he went to the wrong place, uh, wrong places uh, for his development. I, I thought he should have stayed here. You know, going back again, mm -hmm. and hindsight's always a, a, a wonderful thing, but I didn't think he was ready to go. And, you know, mm. it's, it's been a, you know, quite a... I don't think sad story is the right way to put it. I, I, I think it's just been poorly managed. Mm. I just think at that age, it's crucial that you play. Wherever You've got to play. It, you know, from the age of 20 to 23... And that is really your apprenticeship, yeah. and that's where you need minutes. It's not as though his career's over, though. You're looking no. forward to working. No, with him. Of, no course, of course, of course. Not yeah, no, he's on he's on the extended list for the Olly Roos, and yeah. uh, as I said, it's better he goes away with the Olly Roos and gets to play three or four games in in Malaya. Yeah. And uh, Gary Van Egmond can have a look at it, and we get all the video of, of the games, and we'll be watching him. And uh, and what a great story that would be yeah. if he, he you know he bounces back at the Olympics if if he does well, and um, comes back to the A League and gets some minutes. Well. Yeah, you know, that's what we want to see. We want to see Dan. We know he's got talent. There's no yeah. doubt we've seen the talent. An amazing talent, but he needs to play games. Off to a short break on this Socceroos and Ollie Roos special on Fox Sports. We're going to talk about uh, the state of the A-League and Arnie's thoughts on the players that he's noticed so far this season. Yeah, welcome back to this national teams uh, from the men's side of things special on Fox Sports. Graham Arnold is here, the Socceroos and Ollie Roos coach, and Robbie Slater as well from Fox Football. Uh, Arnie, the A-League this season, what's jumped out at you from an Australian coach's perspective? It's been great. I've really, mm. uh, especially the kids, obviously. Everyone's talking about how great the kids have been. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a level playing field, apart from Melbourne City at the moment. But... Uh, you know, anyone, anybody can beat anyone this year and it's just been a, a great competition. From the Australian kids' perspective, is there, I mean, you crunch the numbers and you, mm -hmm. and you go on feel as well about what you see out there. Is it a step, big step forward for the development of Australian youth this year in the A-League more so than perhaps the previous decade, 15 years? Oh, yeah, 100%. You know, Without like, doubt. <clears throat> yeah, like when I took the Olly Roos to Thailand and, and, 
you know, I pretty much had trouble picking a team because I didn't have enough players that were playing in the A-League. I was pretty much ringing an A-League club to talk about two players only. But if I did it today, you're talking about four or five players each club and it's, uh, it's been fantastic. And I do believe as well it's, it's also down to the Australian coaches because like Warren Moon, for example, brings in these kids from Brisbane, the NPL. Mm that foreign coaches, Robbie Fowler, no, no discredit to him or anything, but he wouldn't have known who those players are. So to have those type of uh, Australian coaches coaching in the A-League has really helped give the young kids uh, a great opportunity. And you think, uh, and, and if you look at it deeper as well, COVID, ironically, uh, it's been a terrible time for the world and, and, and for us as well here, but for the, the young players, it's been a godsend in some respects because... You know, a lot of the foreign players had to go home, and, and I've said for a long time now, and no, it's no disrespect, foreign players are welcome here, the good, and we've got good ones, we've got some great ones. Um, but sometimes I think even the third, sometimes fourth and fifth foreigners at clubs over the recent seasons have mostly been sitting on the mm. bench, mm. and that's taking the place of young, young players. And this year, along with what Arnie said about the Australian coaches who know the players and have a deep knowledge of the local game, and also want to promote Australian players, mm. um, that's been a massive reason why they've been given a, given a go. And not only have they been given a go, but we've been saying all year in commentary that they've been sometimes the best players on the field. Been fantastic. And I think the five subs. Five subs has really crazy. helped the speed of the game as well. And, and, you know, I think it's really helped the game as well because at the same time, you, you know, you can have more subs on the bench than what you used to. Mm. Like when I was at Sydney and that, you four players, three players plus a goalkeeper, four players mm. plus a goalkeeper. Well, now when you make five subs, you've got seven, yeah. seven or eight players on the bench and gives you more choices. So you keep that rule? I would keep that rule. I think it's great. I think it's, mm. uh, especially for the tempo of the game, you know, it's, it keeps the a, keeps a tempo high. And mm. uh, as I said, it's been fantastic. And a lot of those games have been decided. Mm. when those changes have been made. And, yeah, last you know, half hour. It becomes yeah. you know, quite chaotic at mm. times. I mean, it, they sort of lose their shape and, and it just becomes chaos, the game. But it's been hugely entertaining. Some of the big names from the A-League that I'm presuming their walk-up starts. I can't presume anything really in life. <laughs> but Jamie McLaren, Ryan Grant, those guys. Yeah. What have you noticed, especially from Jamie this year, who he rocks up to every game of football. He's, he plays yeah, I, at the moment, yeah. he scores. Oh, he's, he's been brilliant. I call him ja Jamie Vardy. <laughs> because I think that... Uh, Without the 12 Red Bulls yeah, before a game. Yeah, well, he's a very similar style player and he's, he's been fantastic. He's energy all year. And look, don't, make, uh, don't mistake it here. Like, you look at Tilio when he comes on the pitch. You know, those, the senior players down at Melbourne City, I think, have played a great role for them yep. in leadership as well on the field to help those young kids. And uh, you look at, uh, you know, Connor Metcalf has had a, a fantastic Superb. season. Um, you know, and, and they've got some great youngsters. Uh, pity Nathaniel Atkinson got injured at the time he did, but you know, Scotty Galloway comes in and does a fantastic job as well. So they've got good depth down there. So these are the players that you're looking at. A couple of names, for instance, like Connor Metcalf you mentioned yep. there. There's a few others around the league. Uh, uh, Danny Genro, who's, who's yep. jumped out, has probably been MacArthur's most important player mm. this season, apart from Matt Derbyshire. Are those the type of players that you're considering maybe doubling up on and maybe going soccer as Ollie Roos? Or, and, I th thinking straight here, or am yeah. I thinking? No, I think oh. you're, you're thinking right, Adam. It's, it's if I'm going to pick them for the Socceroos, well, then you know they have to go to the uh, Olympics. <laughs> so, you know, there's uh, again, you know, Denny Jonru wasn't getting much game time at Melbourne City. He's gone to MacArthur. He's had a fantastic season, and and Connor Metcalf has again has gone from you know pretty much being on the bench and 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 playing every week, and you know, what getting an, better and better and better. And what an honour it was for him last week to be a captain. Mm. You know, so yeah. it's, it just shows you how what the club thinks of him, but also where the kid is, is going. Yeah, and important minutes again, Robbie. Yeah, and, and what and about that goal he scored? And for me, that was a mark of just how far he's come. That one that goes down inside the left channel. Mm. Yeah. And he, I, I, I was comment, we were commentating the game, and I wasn't expecting him to hit it. Mm. And he hit it, and it was just perfection. And um, I'm not so sure a year ago he would have done that, but such is his confidence now yeah. and, and the feeling that... Yeah, these kids now have got this feeling which they haven't had for over a decade. Mm. Is that they're part of it? Yeah. That they, they belong there. They and believe in themselves. Yeah, they now. believe in they themselves. Believe they where, belong. Mate, we had genera we've missed the generations because of what's gone on. We're not going to go into it. Mm. But the way the kids have been treat treated in this country for uh, for over a decade has been dis disgraceful and, and shameful. Mm. And finally now, it's turned around and I, I, I for one, 
we hope COVID's going to end, it will end sooner or later, that this, this policy of young players has to stay. But it feels like clubs, I and mean, you can point on this as well, I mean, you, when you were at Sydney, you said those famous words and people criticise you for them now about the A-League's not a development league, yeah. but I, I get the feeling you said that based on the fact that your academy there at Sydney at that stage mm. and academies around the league just weren't giving yeah. you players ready. Oh, look, Luke Wilkshire, mm. you had to go and get him out of retirement almost yep. to play it right back because you couldn't have anything coming through. Yep. Do you get the feeling now that these academies are starting to get the hang of it and produce players? You look at, say, a Wanderers, yeah. they're producing young players for their first team all the time. 100%. No, and the academy started in 2015. Mm. So, you know, it's now only five or six it's years old. So a, a kid that goes into academy at the age of 13 is now 19. And that's what you, you're seeing, the reward of those academies uh, right across, but also the NPL. Like, <clears throat> for me, one of the big things I tried to do during COVID was because there's no NYL at the moment. Mm. You know, there is no second league, second tier. For me, NPL is the second tier right across the whole country. So it was to be able to give the kids who don't play in the A-League the opportunity to at least play against grown men mm. <coughs> in, in, in the, the NPL and to raise that age group from 20 to 23 because the cutoff age of 20 originally was taking away players' careers yeah. halfway through their apprenticeship. Mm. So at least now with it being under 23, kids can stay in the system longer, stay in the A-League longer, play on the weekends with a dual, re not dual registration, with a registration mm. of being able to play in the NPL. And, you know, and so you're going to see more and more kids uh, come through, but also I do believe you're going to see a much stronger NPL right across Australia as well. Yeah, and they're trying to expand across um, Australia in terms of the amount of games that they play from mm. like the, the usual 20, yeah. 22 to over well, 30, which is one of your things. Exactly. I just think that we don't play enough football enough in this country, you yeah. know, at all, in, at all levels, you know, even 26 rounds in the A-League. I think it's the second lowest out of the, out of the 40 countries we studied and analysed mm. Uh, in, in match minutes. So, for example, if Andrew Redmayne plays 26 rounds, it's the second lowest. Yeah. There's only one below, that's Qatar, mm. who played 24 that's rounds. So, yeah, you know, like, yeah. I don't understand, I, you know, and I expect moving forward that there will be 33 rounds with, you know, mm. there's 12 clubs, so why not play 33 rounds? Yeah. And the NPL, they, you know, here in New South Wales, they play 22 rounds. Why, why don't they play 34, double 36, up, yeah. double up? Uh, the Oli Roos then. So you get to Tokyo in July. What's the, what's the overriding ambition for this campaign when you oh, get there? Medal. I truly believe it. I just, like, I can get in goosebumps now talking about it because it's, uh, I just see so much in these kids. And, you know, we, we did fantastic to qualify in Thailand. It was against all odds. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, it's 15 months since. And those kids have been playing football. Like, they're much better players now than what they were when I first took them to, to Thailand. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the overseas-based boys that uh, are raring to go for it. And, uh, you know, so I just see a, a, a really good campaign. What's important, again, is, is the preparation. And I originally was going to take <clears throat> the best squad to Marbella, but it was important yeah. for me that the A-League boys stayed here and, and continued to get match minutes and, and experience a final series for a lot of them. Uh, but we changed our, our preparation to connect together in, uh, in July 1 in, in Japan where we'll do a training camp for <clears throat> just, just on three weeks where we'll have four friendly games mm. before we uh, play Lionel Messi. And uh, <laughs> Lionel Messi. So you've got Spain, Argentina, Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. Mo Salah going to rock up for Egypt? Let's hope, <laughs> so. Well, let's hope so. So what about overage players for us? Well, as I said before, and I've said it public, I... Yep. I um, I'm not going to build this, the side around three overage players mm. because, you know, the, I, I, I prefer to sit down and look at the, the team lineup, the team shape, the system that we play, and look at the strengths of all the boys and then add potentially older players where we're weak or yeah. if we are weak. If Gary Van Egmond's taken and he's, he's taken the, uh, the squad to Marbella, there's kids in that that this country is not, has never seen, mm. including myself. I know them, I watch them on video, and it's always easy to watch the tactical side, the technical side on video, but you don't learn the character side of people. So these are kids in academy systems overseas? Yeah, he's playing under 20, like Conu Zanetti, he's playing under 23s at Everton every week. Hmm. He's training <laughs> under Ancelotti every day. You know, so let, let these type of kids yeah. show us. And, and, <clears throat> and again, that, uh, again, that is the strength of the soccer is these type of kids. And, and, you know, Gary's uh, going to do that for us. We'll get all the videos. We'll get to Gary. Will give us the feedback. I trust yeah. Gary enormously um, on that. And 
then it's a matter of putting the side, side together. And as I said, it won't be built around the three over no. H. It, it will be built around the strength. You, of the do numbers. you see? Do you see this as now a crucial point and maybe a turning point for us? And you just mentioned the, the kid at uh, training under Ancelotti at Everton, and there's other examples yep. around Europe. Do you see this because we know when we used to qualify for Olympics, so many Socceroos came from the Olympic teams, and then were launched into, you know, and yeah. a lot of us, that golden era, if you want to say it, launched into fam fabulous careers overseas. Do you see this maybe as a relaunch oh. of that happening again? I did a study on it, <clears throat> did a survey on it, and it was uh, 64 players, right, that have gone to the Olympics, that have played for the Socceroos. Right, 56 players got sold overseas after the Olympics. Unbelievable. That's when I so got sold, that's, straight after the Olympics. That's how important it is for a, an individual's career. But, and, and every Olympic campaign, out of every Olympic campaign, five or six players went on to play 50 games or more for the Socceroos. Mm. So yeah. that's how crucial it's I, been. And, and, and if you look at the 80s, even if you go back to the 80s when, the, then with, uh, when Frank Arrock was there and Eddie Thompson there, and we had a yep. Socceroo B team. We did. Yep. That was an, like an under-23 team. We played... You know, I probably played 30 games friendlies against Glasgow Rangers and all these mm. uh, clubs that come out. And then, you know, when it went to under 23s, the Olympics in yep. 1992, mm. that was like our B team. Yeah. That replaced our B team. And the kids kept coming through. But since 2008, we haven't qualified. There's been no B team. And the kids haven't come through. And like, <clears throat> as I said, there's only been since 2000, I think, 2015, 16. Yep. No, sorry, 2015, yeah, 16. There's only been three kids under the age of 23 that are debuted for the Socceroos. Incredible. Mm. That Gears just Bash, shows you the abyss of not making the Olympics. Bash, uh, Azani and Thomas Deng. Hopefully that all changes in the next 10 years. <laughs> exactly. It's up to you. It will. So good luck. Yeah. Good luck, yeah. Um, it, it will. It will. It will. Robbie Slater, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Very, very good. And yeah. looking forward to these matches of the Socceroos, which you'll see on Fox Sports. And good luck with the Olympic preparations as well, Graham Arnold. And uh, safe travels, more importantly. Yes, thank you. And when will we see you again? Well, <laughs> I've got to do this. I want to, you know, it's for my nation. So it's, uh, Brilliant. it could be three months, it could be six months, it could be 12. I'd say there's a lot of people here in Australia hoping it's 12. <laughs> <laughs> you want to then? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for your company as well. The football continues on Fox Sports. We've got plenty of games in the A-League coming your way and looking forward to these matches with the Socceroos just around the corner.